Hey, what's up, everybody? The Kool-Aid has been flowing for the Detroit Lions, for us as fans. We have been excited about what this team is doing. Never better than after the draft. But, Chris, we got to keep it real. We got to just take a step back. Let's, let's pump the brakes for a minute. And you came at me and you said, hey, there are two weaknesses um, that I see on this team, or at least two big ones that you see on this team. I want to I want to ask you, what are those? Give me give me your first weakness that you're seeing with the Detroit Lions going into this season. Yeah, so there's I, I think you, you said these are our biggest weaknesses. I think you yes. could name off five or six like it'd be better yeah. if we had a little more tight end depth, you know, things name like that. Off 10 or 11. Yeah, for sure. So <laughs> um, I think we're like you said, we're heading the right direction. We're excited about where we're going. But I, I think we have to really be real about where we're at in 2022. And mm -hmm. so my biggest weakness is linebackers. I, I've okay. just been really been on linebackers since um, I saw these guys play last year because it going into last year, it's like, boy, Jalen Reeves, maybe like he's going to start Jalen Reeves, on. maybe or, or actually it was uh, Jamie Collins. Like, oh, OK, Jamie, oh. Collins. Jamie Collins. Ooh, I didn't like that. Literally just is like, I'm done. And we just like say, yeah, yeah. He, you yeah. know, it's just not working. What's that? Yeah. Jamie Collins. And then I'm like, and alone, like this guy, you know, he played a lot in, and that just, it just looked slow. We didn't have playmakers. So you and I have talked about ways we're going to try to cover that up this year, but sure. man, linebackers seem like a real weakness because I mean, Jared Davis, there's Chris board. I mean, all, Hey, let's go in and, and see what we can do, but nobody where it's like, boom, we can just stamp this guy in, you know, he's yeah. going to be a great player for us. It, it's a tough position right now. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. Cause when you were talking about the linebacking core, I was like, well, we have a lot of linebackers. Yep. Uh, it, it does seem like there's a lot of bodies to throw there, but it's almost like, let's throw this up against the wall and see what sticks. And I'm just a little bit nervous about what that's going to look like. Uh, and you know, you're like Chris board, maybe, like he could be good, but he couldn't really crack the rotation that much in Baltimore. And then you talk about a guy like An Alex Anzalone, like you know what he is. You mm -hmm. know he's going yeah, to be true. a below average um, to average starter. Um, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I mean, seriously, that's. <laughs> you look at a guy like Jared Davis, it's like, well, there's potential. Well, there's been potential for the first five years of his career. Mm -hmm. So I think that's those are the things that I struggle with the linebacking core. It's the only place um where i'm like it just ain't there it's no. just not there that proven talent um that has been there and we'll make arguments for other positions but like even at the safety or defensive back i'm like well new roria had a good year last year i could say that with six interceptions i could say tracy walker had a good year last mm -hmm. year so at least i'm confident that we have a good starting caliber player at that position I'm not confident at the linebacker core that we have any starting caliber players day one. No. And, That's and, um, struggle. and Barnes really was a disappointment a little bit just because we were so bad. We'd lost our, uh, one of our starting linebackers, just Jamie yeah. Allen just walked off the, you know, whatever in, yeah. in, in Barnes just couldn't even play like, right. I think, Hey man, get in there for a minute. Like give, give Anzalon a breather. It's like, no, yeah. no we're not going to risk get you in there. Literally like in week five, it, yeah. you know, it just felt like he never got in. So we'll see what happens there. We'll see what happens there. And I think, I think the other side of it, I will go, this is a little tangent. Sorry. I know I like right. the tangent with Barnes. I feel like he was a disappointment because we all thought he was going to be a starting linebacker. Uh, he was a fourth round pick, right? I, yeah. So, so it's one of those things where it's like, do we really expect fourth rounders to start in year one? I don't think we can, but still with his athletic ability and just the way he looked, cause he looks like a linebacker, doesn't yes. he? You, you'd expect more. So you're going back in and by the way, just to talk about how disappointing that season really was, how many names did we say about who our linebackers are? And we didn't even mention Barnes. All right. Right. And, and we didn't mention Rodriguez either because he's a fifth round pick or sixth. I don't know what he was. Yeah. Um, and you're just like, I don't know. But you had another reason. You had another reason or another biggest weakness. What's your second biggest weakness on this team? Yeah. Another one that this might surprise you a little bit because I think there's more weaknesses. But this one's just yeah. a, mm, could be a weakness. And I have Jared Goff because okay. I believe we really... I really like him for sure. what he is and what he can do for us. I, I just, I do. I like, I'm not, I don't, it doesn't bother me, uh, you know? And it's like, yeah. Hey, go get this. And you and I've done a videos on like, what are other options? Like we're, we're lucky to have him in a way almost. So absolutely I, I'm good with him, but I'm also like, man, he is 
there's two things that I don't I don't like. Number one, he's not athletic around the line of scrimmage. Right. Like just just gotta have the ball, be able to like you know, I hate to everything has to be perfect for him to succeed. Yes. Yeah. Where Stafford's more natural, just like a he's a dude that's just gonna pick up the ball at you know any basketball court, be able to just be smooth. Like that's kind of how some Backyard of these guys pickup. are. Yeah, he is game. it's like gotta be right. And then the next thing is he hits receivers, but I just um and this is nitpicking, but sometimes it's not though. Some of the just wide open, clean pocket or on a roll balls are not super accurate. And sometimes they and and, and just think, man, if he could be accurate, if he could not sure. force things and be clumsy around the line of scrimmage, we're okay. We are okay. He can he can be good enough, but man, there's just little mistakes that just like we are not good enough for yeah. you to fumble, for you to make some of those mistakes that just can't happen or drift back in, into the pocket when he should be stepping up. I mean, there's just little things that he's not on that elite, elite level. We get that. But it's like, dude, just be like above, just a touch above average and let us kind of just get through this season, see what we got. Because if you, if not, we're just in really bad trouble. And it's just like, no, well, we just didn't have the quarterback. You know, that, that's what it yeah. would be like. And it would just stink. Yeah, that's a big problem to have your weakness be at quarterback, isn't it? Yeah. And and I think when you say that, we've also done videos about why Jared Goff is fine right now yep. and he's the right quarterback. And I, I agree with those videos as well. Here's the thing about Goff. Like, he's a game manager. That's what you kind of want him to be. Um, you don't want – you don't think he's going to be the guy who's going to go out and just win you the game. That's not right. what Jared Goff does. He had a couple of games where he did that last year. But I even, like I said, I was re-watching some of the games, the Vikings game, our first victory. Yeah, he had a good game. He had good yards. He threw for the final touchdown as time expired. Like, he drove us down the field. It was really good. He also had an interception and a fumble. <laughs> and those are the kind of things with him that you're like, why does this keep happening? And so he needs to eliminate turnovers, eliminate mistakes, um, especially fumbles. That's his big bugaboo. Mm -hmm. Interceptions aren't as bad. Uh, they're really not. Agreed. But the, the fumbles are are really, really heavy. And I think the other thing, when when you look at Jared Goff, you just have to realize, like, we want him to be what he was four years ago now in, in, in L.A. And every year that goes away, maybe th four and three years ago, it's like, oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, and it gets a little bit harder. And we keep saying the same thing. If everything's perfect around him, he's a really good quarterback it's hard for everything to be perfect that's around right. you. That's it. So that's exactly it, right. It it's, it's not, that's not real. At the end of the day, your QB's got to make a play or two. And then like, like you said, and that'll be the season really is, is Jared Goff going to be the good version most of the time, or is he going to be the bad sure. version most of the time? I, I don't know. And yeah, that'll be, so, that'll be huge. So we said two biggest weaknesses. Can I give you a bonus third weakness? Yes. I think that uh, this is a weakness is that the biggest areas of talent, like what we would consider guys who are potential elite playmakers are all very young. Mm -hmm. um, it's Aiden Hutchinson. It's Williams. It's Swift. Possibly it's um, it's Hutchinson and he's starting to get older, which is fine. He's going into year four. It's Penny Sewell in year two. I mean, like those guys that are superstar potential, are very young. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that's a good thing because you don't have to pay them like they're old. St. Brown. St. Brown was one. I, I couldn't think of St. Brown. Yeah. St. Brown. Yeah. I was like, there's gotta be another, young yeah, guy yeah. you know? So it's like, can they play with that continued sustained success? Because yes, if you can have a bunch of young guys on cheap contracts and fill them in with good veterans, that's how you have a winning successful team, especially yeah. at the quarterback. But I do I don't know if I would consider it a weakness because in many ways it's a strength to be young at in and in, in inexpensive. Um, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, you might need a little bit of experience, but we yeah. have experience in those positions to, to help them along. So, but you're exactly right though. That is something to just keep it. You know, we, we talk, you started it off with a Kool-Aid check and that's so true. It's like, we got Williams this year. It's yeah. like ACL rookie. Yeah, William I mean, might be back week eight and it'll be at, at like 90%. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's stuff like exactly St. Brown had a great final six games, no question. But I mean, mm -hmm. he's going in year two. It, everyone's like, all right, they're going to that guy. Like, right at the end of the year, we, you hadn't yeah. done anything. They're like, but now they're keying on you. It's going to, I mean, it's just all different. So, exactly, exactly right. The, the, the excitement's there and the playmakers are starting to build, but they're, they're still young.
they're still young. All right. Hey, thank you everybody for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button below. Love the community here. Um, if you have any questions uh, or other future topics you want us to discuss, send us an email, sportstalkdetroit at gmail.com. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. We get those from here uh, time to time. So send us that email, leave a comment below, and we will see you on the next one.